So for day three of my Poetry in Lockdown project, I'm going to read um, a poet called Tom Gunn, who is a mid-20th century English poet who spent most of his life um, in California. And so while his early verse um, employs the more traditional verse forms of English poetry, um, American poetry influenced a move into the free verse of his later work. Um, so I'm going to read a poem called The Plunge, um, with thanks to my colleague Chris Vardy, who recommended this as one of Tom Gunn's queer swimming poems, which I think is a nice description. So, The Plunge. Dine a rope of bubbles, trapped where you chose to come. It is all there is. The brute thrust of entering this all alien, like a bitter sheath. Each nerve, each atom of skin, tightens against it, to a gliding, a moving with. If flesh could become water, it, on lost, plying, a blurred sunken sky, where you carry your own pale home with you, at rest in your own prolonged ache. And the testing forward, how much more can the body take? How much dare? It is all there is. Till the body knows now it's time. Let's go, ah, holding, almost till too late. Gives itself to the slow rejection. You go limp on it, a gentle lift. You wait on it, wait, you eat the air. So as you can see, if I if I hold up the, the, the book, um, the poem uh, is tapered into a narrow column in the centre of the page, resembling the image of a rope dangling down into the water, which fits with that, that first image of down the rope with bubbles. Um, and I love when poets make shapes on the page like this. There's something very playful about it. And the language is pared back. There's no punctuation. It's not written in grammatical sentences with a clear subject, verb, object. And when you're reading it out loud, it's hard to know where to place the pauses. Does the meaning carry over the, the line breaks or the stanza breaks? Um, but I think this fits with the disorienting experience that the poet's describing of entering into this blurred realm of water. And although the poem fits with what we would describe as free verse, it's still exquisitely crafted. And Gunn clusters particular vowel and consonant sounds. So we have brute thrust entering bitter, those hard B and T sounds evoking the hard impact of the body as it hits the water. Then we have the repetition of EA vowels with sheath, each, each, as we move from the more violent impact of entry to the softer progression of gliding and moving with. Words like it, on, lost, plying, stand alone in their own lines slowing down the reading and creating a pace that allows the poet to impede the flow of time um, as he impedes the flow of language so that time itself becomes suspended, held back. So the time of reading and the time of the swimming um, become um, harmonised and that moment in the water expands so that the reader too participates um, in that holding almost till too late. And in its concentration on the corporeal and the fleshly, the poem invites a more carnal reading. The thrust, the gliding, the testing forward, followed by the letting go and going limp, could also be read as a sexual encounter. And the poet's exploration um, of his body plunging into water also becomes a way to navigate and observe his own sexuality. And the conjunction of those two makes each the richer. And we might think about that choice to use uh, to use you rather than I. So who is the you in the poem, um, you know, trapped where you chose to come? Is it the poet remembering himself um, or observing someone else? Um, but I think to me it makes the poem more intimate and that partly opens up into that sexual reading. Um, but it also offers the reader a greater identification um, with the experience. So it becomes possible for us to, to imagine plunging into the water.